Welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John. Can you see what's wrong with this picture? This is a Benjamin Marauder semi-auto and let me zoom in make it easy for you. Well, okay, so it turns out the bolt has been broken off here, you can see. And uh, this belongs to one of our viewers, uh, Patrick, up in Auburn, uh, about an hour up into the foothills here. And he was out there uh, picking off some of them pesky ground squirrels that he's got up there and uh, used a magazine up and tried to pull it out and reload and it was stuck. So he fiddled with it some and, and uh, ended up having to essentially break the magazine to get it out and that's when we discovered or he discovered that the uh, bolt probe was broken off. So we're going to tear this down and take a look. Uh, we're not going to get into the valving because uh, we don't have to. We're just trying to fix the bolt. I guess we'll, the next thing we're going to do here is pull this apart. So we'll go ahead and set it up in the vise. The uh, barrel's off of this end, and it's upside down here. The uh, charging handle goes like that. And so what, when you're pulling it back, it's got this groove that this uh, stud rides in. You can see that pull it back. We'll take another look at that in a minute. And one other thing to notice is this charging handle is slightly crooked here. It's bent from here out. And I don't know if that had something to do with the problems that happened on this gun or not. But uh, anyway, that's not good. Okay, now we're going to take this end piece off. This is called, uh, Crossman calls this a, a buffer, bolt buffer tube, a this end piece is a buffer tube spring perch, I think, and there's a little buffer spring inside there. So we're going to pull all those out, and in order to do that, uh, this spring here, you can see it, the spring right here, uh, has to be retracted because it actually extends uh, into this piece here. So we're going to get that retracted so we can get that piece out. And this comes out and we have the bolt spring. We take a look at these pieces here. You've got three pieces. It looks something like that. This is a little buffer spring that goes on this and goes into the uh, housing here. We've pulled a bunch of parts out here. We've got the spring. We've got no spring tension on the uh, bolt now. And the piece on the end has been taken off here. But when you first uh, cock it, you're using this charge handle here, pulling back the bolt by that stud. That stud pulls back stud on the hammer into the cock position and then when you let go this slams forward and from then on the semi-auto mechanism kicks in and you've got all the different springs here uh, springs and I don't know what's going on inside the gun itself the strength of the different components the springs and whatnot and the timing allows for the uh, semi-auto action to work off of the uh, hammer bounce here. That's how I understand it anyway. Here's the new bolt, the new uh, charging handle, and we have a new 
pin. And that pin is kind of the, the uh, issue that we've got because it's in the bolt there and when they put this all together apparently they put the bolt in and then press this in place. Uh, but there's no way to press it back out. You can't pull it. It's in there uh, with too tight. And so, you know, how do you get that out? And I got a hold of Crossman's uh, technical people. And what they uh, told me to do is to uh, drill a hole here in the top. And they've given me the specifications on that hole. It's going to be 156 thousandths in diameter. And it's going to be located right here between these two ridges. Let's see, between these two, I guess. So um, that's our program from this point on is we're going to drill the hole. And rather than leave an open hole there, I thought we probably should uh, tap that for uh, some sort of set screw or something to keep the debris and dirt and dust or whatever from migrating down into this mechanism. Um, taking a look at the new bolt, then what we'll have to do once we get the old bolt out is inst insert this and we have a new pin and we have to press that pin down in, you know, once it's all, once it's all in, inside the, uh, receiver here. And then it should just go back together, uh, without any issues. Um, and should work. So our plan is to go to the milling machine, drill our hole, tap it, take this to the arbor press, press this out, and then reinstall. While we have it apart, I thought I'd take a look at this. Um, you know, when, when the reason that this whole project happened is that there was a magazine that was stuck in here. He basically had to, um, couldn't get it to budge, tapped on it, did everything, and ended up uh, taking a pair of pliers and wrenching it out. But in that process, too, he raised a whole series of burrs all around the edge here so that um, when, when we got it here, you couldn't even fit a magazine in there. They're just small burrs, but it was enough to prevent putting a magazine in. I mean, you could get it in with a lot of effort, but... So what we did is we got uh, my father's set of Nicholson uh, Swiss pattern files, and we, we used the different ones here and went around and took off anywhere we felt a burr with our fingernail and uh, cleaned it up and now the magazines fit fine. Of course there's no stop, there's no barrel so there's no stop for the magazine right now but they f they'll go in and out nice and easy. The problem is now we've got some marking here from the filing and getting rid of those burrs and um, I don't have any aluminum paint or 
covering to put on there. So that'll be up to Patrick if he wants to, at some point in the future, get something, you know, lumina, lumahide from Brownells or something like that to touch those, touch those uh, markings up. So that's what those are, and when we put it back together, you'll see them, um, and that's, uh, that's the explanation. Okay, and as far as this going together, we're going to put the new bolt in. And we're going to go over to the uh, arbor press and press in the new pin. And I'll, I'll do that off camera. There it is. Um, I don't know the depth of the pin. Uh, so we're just kind of going by feel there. And it seems to work okay. So we're going to let it go with that. I did try it on the gun and, and it does engage with the uh, hammer pin. So we just got to put this all together now. Going back together is just the opposite of uh, taking it apart. Let's see, how did I do this? One trick I found is uh, you can get the spring in there. Kind of hold it in place like that. If you can see that, we got the spring compressed, and that makes it yeah, a whole lot easier. To put this uh, buffer into place like that. And then we have the new uh, charging handle, and we're ready to put it back on the gun. And you saw the disassembly from earlier. It's just the reverse of that. Well, that concludes another episode of our show that we call uh, How the Heck Did That Happen? And we still don't know how it happened. You know, Patrick uh, has some experience with this particular air rifle, and he's been shooting it for six months. I don't think it's anything he did that caused the uh, jam up of the magazine. And just speculating is that maybe there was uh, some sort of stress point in the probe that caused it to break off or who knows what it was but anyway um, I want to thank Patrick for bringing it in and let me shoot some video on it and thank you for watching mm -hmm.